Hi, this is Colleen from Keeping the Peace, Defensive Handgun Training for Women, and today is episode number eight of the Preparing the New Shooter series. We're going to be discussing target analysis today. We're just going to assume that this is my aim point. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but basically it's right where the two clavicle bones come together in the upper chest. Okay, so if you can imagine this as being the place where I'm aiming at the target, my point of aim, POA. Okay, so the most common thing that I see in shooters, new shooters, is that they tend to hit low, so below where they're trying to hit. A lot of times they don't have a specified group yet when they first start, but once they learn to focus on the front sight blade and center it in that rear sight notch, they start to group together once they gain control over the trigger finger, they're definitely grouping together, but sometimes they're doing other things to the gun that cause them to hit in various places. So the most common one that I see is low. It may be centered from side to side, but it's just below where they're trying to hit. Some people it's just a little below, sometimes a lot below, depending on the severity of the problem. And there's a list of things that can cause you to hit low on the target. You'll find as you analyze different shooters, and analyze yourself that sometimes it's multiple errors that are causing a problem and sometimes there's a little bit of crossover. So jerking on the trigger and milking the hand grip or the grip of the gun can cause sort of an overlap in shot placement. Both of them would be low. Milking generally is low and a little bit leftward for a right-handed shooter. Everything that I'm saying is going to be for a right-handed shooter so if you're a lefty you're just going to reverse everything just the exact opposite. Okay. So if you're shooting low and leftward, you're most likely milking the grips of the gun, which means squeezing on the grips as you're pressing the trigger. So you need to just focus in your mind on isolating your trigger finger so that it's the only thing that moves. If you're strictly low, so if your shots are grouped together but they're directly centered and low, several things can cause that. One thing could be that your front sight blade is centered, but not level. So it's actually below the top of the rear. So if you can, if you can see that, hopefully that's visible. Here's my front sight. If it's not perfectly level, if it's down here, I'm going to shoot low. Another reason people can shoot low is because they're looking over the sights of their gun, because they're too concentrated on trying to look at the target rather than at their sights. Sometimes it can be perfect sight alignment, but right as the shot breaks, they're dropping that gun out of the way to try to see where they hit. And if you can imagine shooting a spitball through a straw, let's say I'm going to try to hit you with a spitball, but right as I blow the straw, I turn my head. That spitball's not going to hit you. It's going to be sort of cast to the side. And that same thing can happen if I have my sights lined up, but as I press the trigger, I drop the gun to look and see where my shot went, I'm going to throw it low. Um, another thing that can cause this is anticipation of recoil. So you are thinking in your mind, oh, here it comes, here it comes, and this is really common with brand new shooters. You're dreading the noise, you're dreading the feeling in your hands of the recoil, and at the very last second, just to get it over with, even though you're trying to control everything, you just jerk your trigger, okay? Um, so jerking the trigger, anticipating the recoil, those things kind of go together. Sometimes jerking the trigger, um, anticipating the recoil, and milking all go together. Sometimes also you'll see someone flinch. Flinching can be different per person. One person could flinch and pull the gun up this way. One person could flinch and push it the other way. It just kind of depends on how your reflexes work in your own body. So those are the most common causes of low shot placement. And I'll put a slide here just to list those things again so you can write them down if you'd like. And you can pause on that. The next thing that I see pretty commonly at the range is a centeredness from side to side, but a sort of a rise and fall pattern in shot placement. So if this is my point of aim, the shots can sometimes fall up here, sometimes down here. They're usually fairly centered, but a variation between high, low, high, low. Usually the cause of this is the breathing, okay? Um, but if you're letting any breathing happen at all while you're pressing the trigger, 
then you're going to see a real inconsistency in shot placement in a vertical pattern. Some of them may be a little high, some may be a little low, some may hit right on, okay? Um, but that's a fairly common problem. Okay, another thing that I see at the range is this being my aim point, shots kind of just sort of scattered about, but none of them quite hitting that center point. They're just kind of all over the place. When you're seeing this type of pattern on your target where it looks more like a shotgun has been shooting your target rather than a handgun, generally the problem with that is the person is focusing on the target. If you allow yourself to focus on the target, then you are not lining up your sights. And keep in mind, your bullet will impact wherever the front sight is when it is centered and level. But if I'm looking at the target, I don't really know where that is, and it can be very inconsistent. From shot to shot, that's going to move around because recoil takes place, the gun moves, and if I'm not looking at the sights, I don't know exactly where to put it back. I'm just kind of guessing subconsciously. Okay, so don't focus on the target. Focus right on the front sight, through the rear sight. Make sure it's centered side to side and level, top to bottom. If this were my aim point and I have a nice little group centered side to side but high, okay, so it's above my point of aim. This can be caused by a couple of things. That my front sight blade is just not quite level. So if I you know, stick the gun out there and I don't allow that front sight to come down to the level point, that's going to cause me to shoot high. Another thing that could cause it would be what we call healing. And healing is when you press into the grips of a handgun with the heel of your hand as you're pressing the trigger. So if you can imagine kind of a, a motion sort of like this. Okay, and that will cause your shots to rise. Another thing that I see is what we call inducing recoil or induction of recoil. This is when the person knows in their mind that the gun is supposed to move, but they've sort of made it in their mind to be a huge motion and they're convinced that it's just going to really, really travel upward. Um, this also happens, I think, because we play with toy guns when we're a kid and we kind of go pow pow and we kind of simulate recoil. Well, these shooters will simulate recoil, but they don't realize they're doing it. So as they press the trigger, they're actually raising the gun above, above the amount that it would naturally recoil. Okay. The last thing that we see at the range would be, this being my aim point, shots that fall to the side. If your shots are falling to one side or the other, usually the cause of that is either too much or too little trigger finger. If you put too much or too little trigger finger, you're going to make that gun yaw from side to side. You want to place that trigger finger in the middle of the first pad so that you can press that trigger straight to the rear. So a way to diagnose yourself of this would be a ball and dummy drill. Have someone load your magazines for you. Um, or if it's a revolver, have them load your cylinder for you and put in some dummy rounds or snap caps as we call them. But you don't know where they are. So you fire the gun as normal and when the gun strikes or when the firing pin strikes a snap cap, you're going to get a click but no bang. But you'll be able to watch what happens to the gun. If you hit a click with no bang but your gun does this, you're inducing recoil. If you get a click with no bang but your nose drops, you're probably either jerking the trigger, milking, dropping the gun to look for your sights, anticipating the recoil, or maybe a combination of those things. These are some really common shooter errors. Remember, you may be committing more than one of these errors. Pick one, try to diagnose yourself, okay? Judging by the different shot placements that we talked about today, if you're, if you're doing one of those things that's an overlap of different errors, pick one error at a time and see if you can conquer it, and then maybe videotape yourself or have someone go to the range with you to see if you might possibly be doing uh, more than one of these things. And just conquer them one at a time. Don't try to conquer them all at once because you'll overwhelm yourself and you'll get frustrated. Remember, always leave the range with a positive experience. If you start getting frustrated or angry at yourself, pack it up, put it away, and go back another day with a fresh mind. Thanks again for joining me today for Episode 8 of the Preparing the New Shooter series. I look forward to seeing you next week in Episode 9 where we're going to talk about nomenclature and function. 
We're going to go through a revolver and a semi-automatic and talk about all the little pieces and parts that you see on your gun, what they do, what they're for, how to properly use them, and that might help you with some of the lingo that you're going to hear in the gun world. It's really intimidating as a new shooter to come into this community and hear people rattle off all these terms. And um, hopefully this nomenclature video will help you to know the pieces and parts of your gun to be a little more comfortable conversing about them. And you can look forward to, in the near future, me starting a new series called Gun Terminology for Dummies. I'm going to be going over some of those terms that you hear in the gun community that you have no idea what they're talking about. And you're wondering, you know, it's like a foreign language. So hopefully we'll be able to bring that down to earth for you and uh, make some of these terms applicable for you and so that you can converse about them with other shooters. Thanks for joining me today. look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful day and God bless. Bye.